You're welcome back to the gavel. Earlier, we spoke with a federal lawmaker, Representative Lego Idabu, who is sponsoring a sexual offences register bill. This bill, when passed, will guarantee that convicted sexual offenders against children must register at police stations in the states where they reside in. They must also submit their fingerprints and personal details at these police stations, and failure to do so is a crime. The intent is to discourage sexual abuse of children and minors and to also protect them. We had a chat with a lawyer, Mr. Aja E. Aja, to get the legal perspective of this bill and if this legislation is necessary in the first place. I think the law is quite stringent the way it is right now. What is lacking more or less is um, the awareness, the consciousness, and the, uh, whip, uh, the, the, the will by people involved, especially by the parents, guardians, or relations of those involved. Because in most instances, in most cases, when there is an incident of uh, child molestation, child abuse, you would see that they would rather prefer to compromise the issue more than, um, than take it further. Like they will say, okay, if, if my neighbors hear that my daughter is, is, um, was violated, the stigma will be there for a long time. And in rural communities, they will like think, this girl cannot, can no longer find a husband in this place, in this close-knit society. So they will rather want a way around, around it if, uh, the, if the perpetrator, if the villain is rich enough to offer some kind of uh, economic compensation, they will rather go for it. They will say, after all, after all, she has not really lost anything. But not knowing that the girl has lost so much, whether it is a girl or a boy. Because these things cut across. Sometimes the victim is a boy, sometimes it's a girl. I think uh, what is lacking, the law is quite stringent on issues of rape. Uh, a law that sometimes could take, uh, could give as much as uh, life imprisonment is not something to, to be tried with. But in most cases, once the people who have been affected are not able to come forward, then what can the law do? We've heard time and time again, and I've even also, you know, in terms even as a journalist, in reporting cases of child rape and defilement, that it's pretty difficult to get conviction so many factors it's difficult to prove it's more of a systemic thing how okay the one of the basic ingredients of rape is that there must be penetration at least from the penal or criminal code part of it we may not be talking about in fact even the verb vawp act also talks about penetration but let's look at it from the issue of or from the perspective of a man and a lady if there is pen, if there is a, a breach of the hymen in a lady's uh, private part, it could be as a result of many things. So there must be a connection between the act of the man and the consequence on the woman. Now, if the man forces himself on a woman, either by force, by threat... We're talking about children here. Okay, okay, okay. Even children. in the case of children, yes. Yeah. Yes, if, if you take your daughter now to, um, let's say to, in the absence of confessional statement by the accused person, by the defendant, by the villain himself. If you take your daughter now to, let's say, a hospital two days after the act, by then it will be difficult for forensics to determine that Mr. A, because if you take her minutes, hours after the act, probably there will be a residue of seminal uh, fluid from the man's body that will be recovered and there will be DNA uh, signature of the man in that, in the, in the girl. So you can establish that actually the issue of beaching the girl's uh, hymen or the issue, issue of penetration was actually done by Mr. A. But when you take the girl to a police station two days after the act, or maybe you notice that the girl, maybe, you know, sometimes some of these things are sociological. You find out that a girl, a baby, is not too close to the mother because of, this, uh, because of fear or some other factors. And then before the mother takes time to notice that this girl is walking in a way, or maybe it's when he takes her to to the bathroom and when she takes her to the bathroom she now notices that once she touches one part of her body the girl will scream come uh, small girl what is wrong with you by then many hours may have passed and then for you to before then you'll be advised take her to the police station you take her the police will now ask you to go for a medical test 
by the passage of time, so many things must have been destroyed. And then that evidence will not be there. And at the end of the day, you force the man, you make him sign a statement, he tells, says, okay, I did it. And he goes to court and he shows where you tortured him, even though he did it. But because the confession was not voluntary, they threw out the piece of paper. And then there is basically nothing else to rest your persecution on. And you see the man walking free at the end of everything, even though it is clear, crystal clear.